Hello and welcome to Dr. Shiny Tarot. This is a daily pick a card reading for December the 8th, which is uh, Tuesday. The purpose of this reading is to give you a brief piece of advice or to help guide your overall focus for the day. And if you're looking for a longer, more detailed reading, please check out my channel. I do many other readings, monthly readings uh, for each astro uh, astrological sign, full moon readings, love readings, many others. So if you're new to pick a card readings, the way this works is that you'll choose from one of the three piles here and then click on the timestamp in the description to skip ahead to the reading you've selected. So if you do feel compelled to choose more than one card, that's totally fine. Please follow your intuition here. There's likely to be some good advice in each reading, even if one of these piles is more accurate than the other. Uh, so I've also added three crystals to aid in your selection, and they are uh, black tourmaline, and I am in the process of trying to get a better camera. <laughs> And I also am in the process of getting rid of these butterfingers. But uh, here is the black tourmaline. And then this is a smoky quartz. Wonderful point of smoky quartz here. And then this one over here is another bottle of butterfingers. This one over here is green emerald. And it is rough, so it does not quite such like a shiny gemstone, but it is rough cut emerald. Okay, so um, I am going to give you about 30 seconds of silence so you can meditate on your choice uh, if you wish. And then once you have your choice or choices in mind, go ahead and find the timestamp for your choice in the description below. All right, so we'll go ahead and start the 30 seconds now. Okay, so if you have not already done so, please make your selection and scroll down to the description and click on the timestamp corresponding to your choice. And we are going to go ahead and get started with pile number one, the black tourmaline. So for pile number one, we have the six of pentacles. The seven of cups crossing and the Eight of Cups in the reverse for the advice. Okay, so um, this has two possible meanings here. So um, in this card, there is somebody who is giving and then there's somebody who is receiving. Um, and the person who's giving, or either one of those uh, people could be you in this current situation. So uh, either there is a period of abundance of having um, extra money, extra time, extra... Um, energy for, you know, just even talking to people or helping them with their issues uh, or being kind. Uh, you know, you have some abundance of some resource that you are willing to give out to people. Or on the other hand, you may be the one who is receiving from that abundance. Uh, you're in need of some charity or, um, you know, very grateful that somebody else is helping you out. So, um, two meanings to this particular card. You're in one of those situations. Um, and what's crossing is this Seven of Cups. So Seven of Cups is uh, all about having all these choices coming at you um, from all kinds of directions. And the, the real thing about this is that none of those choices is really without some significant drawbacks. There's always It's almost like there's a trap. And... Uh, like every part or every single choice that you could possibly make has some hidden dangers uh, included. So this is usually coming up to ask you to kind of like take a step back. And if, if a choice must be made, 
then uh, consider the cons for each of the choices uh, very carefully. Don't rush into anything, but kind of like work through this and ask yourself what's absolutely necessary. Um, there's always a lot of uh, ex excess in this card so whether it be excess in all the options that are coming at you or excess in your need to make a choice and to get more things or to um, just keep on going <laughs> um, there's always some form of excess here uh, I like how this artwork it almost looks like uh, the dragon and Lord of the Rings uh, Smaug or Smaug, Smaug <laughs> uh, who you know sits on his pile of gold and is very um, uh, fiercely defending it, right? So there's this uh, all of these things. While they may seem great, um, they they have something that's defending them, some sort of trap associated with them. So be careful. Now the advice card is this Eight of Cups in the reverse. Um, this would indicate like. Um, being being afraid to withdraw so i think that what this is saying is maybe you feel as though you gotta make some sort of choice or you have to be involved in this situation and you don't really there is an uh, an option for you to kind of take the exit to to get out of the situation completely to not make a choice um and uh you may be overlooking that option so these cards, they could apply, of course, in two ways, depending on the situation that you found yourself in, uh, in the Six of Pentacles here. So if you are the giver, you're abundant here, um, it, this could mean that you, you don't have to um, keep giving. You can. There, it is an option to withhold. You may, If you're a parent, you may feel like you can't do that because your children need you and it's your responsibility. Um, but on the other hand, it may be that they are abusing your generosity and that withholding um, whatever you've been giving them is actually more generous in a way. You're giving them something else, which is a lesson in life or um, self-reliance, which may be uh, a more valuable thing to give them than what you were previously giving them. So that's one interpretation of it. Um, just like keep in mind that your generous nature is wonderful and it is a redeeming quality of you, but there is a, a possibility of a situation where somebody kind of takes that generosity for granted. So ask yourself if that's happening or if you know, everybody who's wanting your help here is really just out for themselves and ask yourself if it's better served for you to just sort of sit on it for a while to keep it, you know, don't let it burn a hole in your pocket and uh, see what other opportunities come up. Now, on the other hand, if you're on the receiving end and you're in need of charity and all that kind of thing, um, you've got to ask yourself with this Eight of Cups, is there a way for you to get out of that situation to change your lifestyle? Is, is some sort of habit that you have um, maybe, you know, you want to buy too many shoes or, uh, you want to buy too many clothes and you think you need to have these things. And that's where the seven of cups comes in, but is it really necessary or is it kind of just keeping you in this situation where you are financially, uh, dependent on others? And can you withdraw from that situation by kind of changing your life, um, or making a few better habits? All right, so that's about it for pile number one for the black tourmaline. Let's go ahead and move on to pile number two with the smoky quartz. If you chose pile number two, we have the six of cups in the reverse, uh, the strength card, and the Page of Swords. Okay, so this is cool. Um, the Six of Cups in the reverse um, can mean you, you're feeling a little detached from your inner child. You know, this is uh, normally in the upright, this would be nostalgia and thinking back to um, childhood, but in a not in such a clinging to the past kind of way, but in a way of... Um, just kind of like appreciating the journey, appreciating where you've come from and where you are. Um, it has a way of kind of tying back to the present if it's in a healthy, 
balanced way. If it's not, uh, there's kind of, again, two meanings with this. Either it's like a clinging to the past and wanting to go back um, because, like, you know, adulthood sucks, or it's like being disconnected from that, being disconnected from that childlike energy and feeling really kind of like cynical and worn out. Um, Burnout comes to mind with the uh, inverted Six of Cups here. And uh, it kind of is reinforced by what's crossing you here, this the strength card. Um, so th- the strength card is not really about like being a muscly, um, strong, outward, you know, um, um, burly type of a figure. It's not that type of strength. That's closely associated more so with like the, the chariot. But with the strength card itself, um, it's more about inner strength and it's more about like having fortitude, this figure, there's often like a delicate female uh, who is kind of like caressing a lion and, you know, the lion should be eating her, but it doesn't because she has this sort of steady, um, calm, uh, not necessarily rational, but uh, steady, calm pl- um strength an inner strength an inner will um a a a chill (laughs) she's got some chill and this is what kind of keeps the lion from freaking out and eating her Um, but she also gives that lion something that he needs you know he's a ferocious monster he's got plenty of chaos within him and she gives him a little bit of stability and love and affection um, which he craves because you know everybody's afraid of the lion, right? And and so she's giving him a safe space, giving him something that he needs. And in, 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 uh, in return, I imagine he would somewhat protect her, right? He, um, lends his strength to her. So, uh, this is strength within the context of like an inner willpower or, uh, inner fortitude. So crossing you again, this would kind of mean that you're possibly a little bit burned out you're not feeling strong you're feeling worn out you need a break you need vacation or or something like that that's kind of how you're feeling um and not really feeling like you know getting up and doing the same monotonous thing every day so the advice card here is uh the page of swords the pages are almost they're they're more of like a a childlike energy they're usually depicted as very young or children um, sometimes princesses um, and in this one uh, it it's no different this is a young figure who has like a, a fresh idea they are um, they have these plans to, to do something new uh, or exciting something that gets their uh, gears turning So this is telling you to kind of invite this more childlike energy back um, to work on a new project, to start something new. And it doesn't have to be huge. It's not necessarily saying that you have to completely shake up your life, Um, but it is to, to, uh, you know, you can have small side projects like growing herbs or uh, a small garden or, you know, having a YouTube channel, um, anything like that. Some new idea which gives you an opportunity to exercise your creativity and um, to get your mind, uh, you know, to get you out of your head, to get your mind working on some kind of a problem or issue, um, but in a fun way. So that's the advice for the situation. Um, the, uh, the other way I would kind of put it, um, I remember Jim Carrey one time said that depression is your body's way of telling you that it doesn't like the path you've chosen (laughs) Uh, or something to that effect I'm, i'm paraphrasing but i thought that was kind of a cool way of looking at it and you know i don't want to make light of clinical depression some people have where it it doesn't really matter what they're doing they just feel depressed Um, but I do think that clinical and I've seen it where clinical depression or the existence of clinical depression can be used as sort of an excuse um, where what the problem really is is people are engaging in a pattern of life that doesn't really serve them or doesn't really mesh with their soul you know um, there is like one central idea of like how life ought to be lived in the West where you have this job, you do the same, roughly the same thing every day. There's a little bit of variability. You know, if you're lucky, you get something that's a little more exciting or something. Um, and then, you know, or you could have your own business or that kind of thing. But uh, many, the vast majority of people end up working for somebody else to get their money. 
and it can be a little bit soul crushing at times. Um, so if you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing for you to do that. It may be the path is necessary, um, but if it is necessary, then find ways for you to still invite that sort of exciting childlike energy to get projects up and going that uh, really do help or you know make you feel more fulfilled in life. So that's about it for card number two. Pretty good reading there. Now we're going to move on to card number three with the emerald. If you have chosen the emerald, this is for you. So you have the hanged man. Oop, can't get that. Um, crossed by the two of wands. And advice is the devil, which is a little bit odd for the advice, but I think we can make that work. So, uh, current situation, the hangman. Um, I'm feeling like this means that you're in a kind of more of like a, you're not moving around much. Uh, you're, you're stuck, you're feeling stuck, maybe a little bit bored, stagnant, something like that. Um, but you're not making many moves. You're kind of just chilling. You're uh, sitting on your hands. And, uh, you know, that could be something that is forced or it could be something that is more... Uh, self-imposed there's it's pretty obvious in this particular art that the person is kind of hanging themselves up there so I kind of picture this as like a child hanging on the monkey bars um, which isn't really accomplishing much right but it is I guess fun and it, it's not necessarily um, wrong to do so but in the context of this reading here I'm thinking it's kind of more of like a you're not uh, moving forward. You're just kind of chilling. You're just sitting in the same spot and waiting on something um, to occur. Now, with the energy crossing you here being the Two of Wands, uh, Two of Wands is if there's any card in the deck that is associated with planning, that's what this card is. This is making a path forward um, in your mind, but not putting any action into it at all. I like how in this artwork, there's like a a big old wall or something in front of him where it just he looks very separated from the territory that he's kind of surveying and so it's this idea that you're really not even close to act actually acting um, so planning is great and, and it is good to have a, a solid plan in place but there is a limit where um, really you know planning is hesitation and so if you're hesitating too much, you never really do anything and you're just so worried about um, success or, or um, scared to get started that you never really end up going down many paths. And that's unfortunate because, you know, failure is not that bad of a, a thing to encounter. And it's um, there's a lot of adventures to be had out there. So crossing you, this is saying that you're getting a little bit too stuck in the whole planning phase um, and not really moving into action so much. So your advice card is the devil. Um, this one kind of puzzled me at first when I saw it because I'm like, how in the world is this your advice? Um, but it kind of is making a little more sense where typically the, the devil is more your kind of shadow side. Um, and it does have a function. It, it's not um, completely you know, evil like a lot of people because of religion and whatnot, people think of the devil as kind of the ultimate bad guy. Um, but you do have to consider that the ultimate bad guy has a purpose and a role in, in everything. And even if you're very religious, you know, there's a reason that um, God doesn't just destroy the devil outright. Um, and, you know, I can hear my grandmother telling me, well, he will one day <laughs> and that kind of thing. Uh, but he could at any moment, right? But there's still a purpose in his existence. And um, that can be to sort of like drive you. It's kind of like a, a hot coal under your foot, right? That gets you to jump, that gets you to, to move. And um, I've asked before, uh, kind of rhetorically, if, you know, if the devil didn't exist, would people really seek God, right? So there's that kind of, you know, there's uh, sticks and there's carrots. Uh, carrots are attracting you towards something good. And then sticks are kind of like getting you to move from something bad. And the devil, as an aspect of your own nature, has a way of getting you to feel out 
your likes and dislikes, um, what you want in the world and what you don't want. Um, you know, it has uh, a way of shaking things up, mixing things up a little bit. And, um, um, you know, your desires are really just kind of a driving force. It's like you can think of everything that you ever do as moving you toward or away some particular desire, um, whether it's being a good person, moving you toward, you know, heaven or something like that, or eating, moving you away from, from death and toward being full. There's always these, these desires which are constantly, uh, we're constantly caught in the balance between. So for your advice here, the way that I took this is that uh, to get out of this sort of planning phase, to get out of feeling like everything needs to be well thought out and all that, um, invite a little bit of that um, I'm going to break things energy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there, there, a little bit of recklessness is kind of like um, – like salt in a stew, right? This is uh, a, a, too much of it is unbearable, but you have to have a little bit or it just tastes like something is missing. It, it, there's got to be a little bit of troublemaker um, type mentality. You've got to be a little bit of a rascal sometimes to get things done um, because if you're just too hung up on being perfect or being a perfectionist, that's a really good way to kill your productivity because you never really move on from another project. You just like spend all of your time thinking and planning, overthinking. So uh, t the positive aspect of this to invite into your life is to just not be quite so concerned with everything being perfect and to allow your darker nature to exist, to allow – to make peace with that shadow side of yourself, um, to understand that it's there um, – and to to utilize it in the most balanced way possible, which is just like I said, like the salt in a stew. A very little bit of it is really all you need, and it kind of just breaks up that um, stagnant energy. Um, the where people run into problems is when they have too much of this. Um, so you know, and it is sometimes a slippery slope, and that's a lesson in life all in of itself. Um, how to you know avoid going down that path too much and you know we have star wars once you start but down the dark path forever will it dominate your destiny and that kind of thing but uh if you were paying attention the overall moral of that uh story was that luke was able to integrate the light and the dark side and thereby bringing balance to the force right so um yoda was you know mr light side and uh, so his point of view was you can't touch the dark side. But the overall message was actually that sometimes it's necessary to save the galaxy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and that's a, a kind of a more difficult lesson, but that's a really, really cool one. I haven't seen something like that before. So um, very neat. And that's about it for pile number three. Now, uh, if you have any further questions or... Uh, comments, please leave them below. Um, I really enjoyed that. Please let me know what you thought. And I will see you guys again tomorrow for the next reading. Bye-bye.